Hello, my name is Charlotte Scholz and I'm a professor at DTU Environment at the Technical University of Denmark. Welcome to this short talk on measuring of greenhouse gas emissions from environmental treatment facilities. When we treat organic waste, it will result in emissions of methane and nitrous oxide to the environment. Both of these gases are very potent greenhouse gases and uh, result in climate change. These emissions are diffusive and highly dynamic by nature, occurring from localized point sources to large aerial sources at the facility. Now if we take an example, for example a landfill, methane can be emitted from leachate collection wells or pumping stations or from open waste cells and finally covered waste cells. And if we think about the scale and the complexity of these facilities, this just adds to the overall challenge of quantifying these uh, very diffusive emissions. Traditionally, the most common method to be applied when you want to quantify uh, emissions is the flux chamber method. This method employs a chamber that you put on the surface or encapsulate the emission point that you want to quantify the emission from and then you measure the accumulation of gases inside the chamber and based on this you can calculate an emission. This method has some advantages which are that it's quite a simple method and it's quite cheap in terms of instrumentations. But there are also a number of limitations. Obviously you only measure the emissions from the small area that you have covered or encapsulated. This means that there is quite a risk for overlooking some important emission points. It also means that you need to do quite many measurements if you want to upscale uh, to get the total emission from your site. And when you do this, actually what, you, what often happens is that you tend to underestimate the emissions because there are some points that you do not, emission points that you actually do not cover. Then finally, the application of the chamber on the surface itself can affect the emission rate, which often also leads to an underestimation of the emission. At DTU Environment, we work with an alternative measuring method. We call it the dynamic plume tracer dispersion method. This method measures the whole emission from your site. And what it's based on is a combination of a tracer gas release on your source with downwind plume measurements of your tracer gas that you release and of the gas that you want to quantify. So if it's from a landfill, that could be methane. So how you obtain the methane emission is that you use the ratio between the tracer gas and the methane. And this is what you see here. This is a plume. So it's the plume concentrations that you obtain when you traverse the plume downwind and based on this ratio, you can then quite accurately calculate the methane emission from your site. But what, you, what is important for this method is that you can manage to simulate your emission sort correctly with the tracer release gas bottles that you place on the, on the source. This uh, means if you're quite far away, this becomes less important because then this large aerial source tend to become a point source in the overall landscape. Um, but when you are quite far away from your source, of course, your plume is rather diluted and then you need some uh, analytical instruments that are very sensitive or have a high resolution that you can measure small concentrations, um, small concentration differences. You also need an instrument that has a quite fast response because you are uh, driving the instrument around so the instrument all the instruments are placed in the car and then you can get a very uh, nice imprint of your methane and tracer plume. Then in our measuring van we also have GPS uh, equipment and a weather station so that we can see in real time where we are and we can see the concentration so we can actually see when we hit the plume concentrations go up and when we exit the, the plume. We can also look for different um, emission sources and so on. Now I'll show you an application of the method. 
uh, what you see here is a landfill and it actually has a landfill just next to it and when we were asked to quantify the method from this side they tend to forget to tell us that there was also a landfill just next to it. So we put up our tracer release bottles and then we measured downwind and we saw at least two plumes and something told us that there was also this another source and then we went back and asked for more information said oh yeah it's right there was also another landfill here. So then we start putting tracer gas bottles at the two sites and used a specific wind direction and this is actually what you can see here is the methane plume from one site and the methane plume from the neighboring site and then you see the corresponding tracer gas plumes. And in this way we could not only quantify the methane emission but we could also separate the emission um, from the two different sites. So sometimes when you, you can use the wind directions and then you can actually uh, use that to separate emissions from different uh, sites or uh, activities. Now I'll show you um, some methane plumes from another site. So here we have a waste treatment facility they treat organic, uh, source separated organic household waste and they treat it first in an anaerobic process where they produce biogas and then they treat it in an aerobic uh, process where they produce compost. And here you see the downwind methane plume and the orange is the uh, tracer gas plume. And here at this site we measured a methane uh, emission of about 30 kilo an hour and a nitrous oxide emission of about 1 to 2 kilo an hour. Um, so is this of any importance at all? And in order to answer that we actually did some environmental assessment of the plant where we use life cycle assessment. And I'll show you the results in terms of global warming impact measured as kilo CO2 equivalent per ton input material to the plant. And how to read this diagram is that everything that is below so given as negative numbers are the benefits or saving to the environment. And this may consist of biogas and the compost generated because this can replace the use of fossil fuel and of mineral fertilizer. Whereas everything above is a load to the environment and this mainly consists of these diffusive, uh, diffusive greenhouse gas emissions. And the first column here actually shows the emission of methane and nitrous oxide which was measured by uh, the use of flux chambers. And you can see that they are quite smaller in comparison to the emission that we measured. So if we add the methane emission, now it's the, the total methane emission from the site that we measured using the tracer dispersion method. It looks like this and if we then replace the nitrous oxide emission it looks like this and if we add the total methane emission and the nitrous oxide emission this is the overall result. And what you see here on top of the bar you can see the net environmental impact and that actually goes from something that is an overall saving to the environment to something that now is an overall burden to the environment. And so this really illustrate how important it is to quantify these greenhouse gas emissions and that when you apply a method that tends to integrate the whole emission then you uh, see unfortunately much more, more impact. So just to summarize and conclude on this short talk uh, what we at DTU Environment do is that we will continue to measure greenhouse gas emissions from different uh, waste treatment facilities and we also focus quite, quite intensively on further development of the tracer gas dis the, uh, method and we try to validate and improve the method and we do this by performance of large-scale control release tests and we also participate in international comparison tests. One of our aim is to get a certification of uh, the method in the very near future. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.